socially responsible wind farm development. So obviously a key part of being socially responsible if any, with any infrastructure development is community engagement. But why bother with that? <laughs> I'm sure some of you remember this from a few years ago. I think there was one gentleman, this is a road in China, a new road in China, and uh, I think one gentleman in this block of flats decided he wasn't moving. So they just built the road around it. In my industry, this is the equivalent. People burn effigies of wind turbines. So you're in a very bad space if you've reached that particular point in your infrastructure development. Because that sort of community conflict is very bad for the developer. <coughs> Divides the community. We're certainly aware of cases of, of brothers turning against brothers, not just the community against the community. Uh, it delays the permitting process. You get objections even you know, once the project uh, moves into construction or operations. Hurts the company image. Reduces the investment potential if you're trying to, you know, encourage uh, the super guys to invest in your project. They're not really going to be interested if they've got all this stuff going on. Uh, and, you know, for the staff themselves that are developing the project, it's a terrible drain on morale. And uh, you really don't want to be developing a project when you have to deal with this. If things get really bad then you can go to First Dog on the Moon, who've listed the 244 symptoms of wind turbine syndrome. Um, there's just a few of them, but uh, I've actually, I, have, I have honestly heard some of these out on projects, so mutated chicken eggs. Uh, we've heard all sorts of things about horses going nuts. Um, uh, you, know, you can go and see them, there's a big list of, of problems caused by wind turbines. <coughs> All of which, of course, are complete nonsense, but um, you can't tell people that. So let's maybe look at some of the issues here. So the permitting process, and this really goes for any infrastructure project, it's not just wind, it involves going through a whole bunch of studies. Those are, you know, the birds and the bats, acoustic, the look of it, um, is it going to, you know, down planes, is it going to interfere with TV reception? Etc. Etc. And the list is very is is extensive. Those planning schemes are very adversarial. They're really looking for negatives. What are they actually going to cause a problem to? They're not looking for positives. <coughs> they don't tend to talk about the community, which is you know a big problem because really I think they're the most important thing about infrastructure development in many respects. Community tends to have this expectation that the projects are just going to happen to them. Um, they're not going to happen with them or for their benefit. So, how do we actually go about achieving a social license to operate, as we call it? So, at WinLab, we think about the proximity principle. We think about those people that are closest to the project are the most important. And we try and build trust. We want the community to accept us when we turn up. We want them to believe that there are genuine positive impacts, uh, both for themselves and for their communities. So there's a big trust building process, as we said, the proximity principle, a lot of face-to-face -face meetings, a lot of genuine listening, and never argue. If someone tells you that their horses are going to be, you know, go crazy, you can't argue with that. You have to listen and accept their point of view and maybe you know, try and encourage them to go and do some research of their own and be very transparent. So just a quick case study, so Canoe Bridge, six turbine wind film, so we've gone through this principle and we actually shared um, shares with all of the neighbours within three kilometres of the project, all of them accept, accepted the, the shares, we got letters of support from, from all of them and uh, a very quick, or pre pretty much a record in the industry approval, and that project is now up and running and actually selling energy to, to Canberra. So great outcome there. And very quickly, just also we're doing similar stuff in South Sub-Saharan Africa. This is Aida, our project manager over there, doing community engagement Tanzanian style on the back of the bike. Um, and in Amakala, a similar process, so this project is up and running, we established two trusts, each of which holds 2.5% of the equity in the wind farm, 
and that equity is used to fund social, um, to fund initiatives that positively benefit socio-economic uh, things in those communities. So thank you very much.